Jay Gurudev. Today we will continue reading My Life, Its Legacy and Message by Pandit Sriram Sharma Acharya. Chapter 8 The Third Pilgrimage to the Himalayas Sowing the Seeds of Rishi Tradition After the work at Madura had been stabilized on a satisfactory footing, I received the third call from the Himalayas, in which there was indication about the next phase of the assignment to be given to me. There had been considerable pressure in the continuing phase of work, which had resulted in exhaustion, although success had been achieved. Under these circumstances, this invitation for recharging the battery was most welcome. I set out for the pilgrimage on the prescribed day in June 1971. There was no difficulty as I was familiar with the route. The cold was also not as severe as it was at the time of my first pilgrimage. I also did not feel loneliness. I was escorted by Gurudev's messenger from Gomukh to Nandanban as usual. The auspicious moment to which I was keenly looking forward throughout the journey ultimately arrived. After exchange of reverend courtesies and blessings, the impartation of guidance started. Gurudev said, you have to leave Madura and shift to Haridwar and start the work of reviving the Rishi traditions. You will recall that when you came here for the first time, you had met Rishis living in this region in their astral bodies, and each of them had expressed distress at the extinction of their traditions, and you had promised that you would accomplish this task. This time you have been summoned for this purpose. God has no physical form. Whenever something epoch-making is sought to be achieved, Rishis who remain engrossed in Tapascharya bestow their powers on Devatmas, great personages, and get the work done through them. Vishwamitra took Bhagwan Ram to his ashram on the pretext of defending his yajna, trained him in Bala and Atibala, the Dyas, and got the citadel of demoniac forces demolished thus paving the way for the establishment of Ram Rajya. Sri Krishna had gone for studies to Sandipan Rishi and returned after he had been duly imparted the message of the Gita. His role in Mahabharat epoch and in carrying forward the Rishi tradition of Sudama. Ancient scriptures are full of descriptions how Rishis molded great personages and got important work accomplished through them. Although they themselves always remained engrossed in spiritual pursuits, sadhana, research, etc., it is this work which you have to accomplish. The seer of Gayatri Mantra was Vishwamitra who had lived in Sapta Sarovar, Haridwar, and had acquired mastery in the miraculous power of Gayatri. That place is now reserved for you. You will be able to find it out easily. Name it as Shantikunj, Gayatri Tirtha and sow the seeds of all the life-transforming traditions which were established by the rishis when they lived in their physical forms. They need a physical medium to get their work done. I, too, had felt a similar need, found in you a competent person, contacted you and initiated you in this task. These other rishis have also similar aspirations. You have to sow anew the seeds of old rishi traditions, which is no doubt a difficult task, but you will be getting patronage, blessings, and a divine gift of executing competence from me as well as from all of these rishis, and you will proceed in carrying out the given assignments undeterred. Briefly describing the still incomplete work of the rishis, I was asked to acquaint people with the power of Gayatri Mahamantra, according to the tradition of Vishwamitra Rishi, and to establish a Siddha Pita Gayatri Tirtha, to write books and 18 volumes of Pragya Puran in Vyas tradition, to extend the science and philosophy of Yog Sadhana in Patanjali tradition, to build up an atmosphere of refined and ennobling vibration by eradicating evil tendencies from the minds of the people according to Parashuram tradition, to conduct scientific research and popularize the use of medical herbs according to Charak tradition, to heal and set right mental disorders by holistic treatments of Yagyopathy in Yagyavalkya tradition, to establish sadhana aranyaks for promoting the growth of goodness and character building in Jamadagni tradition, to lead a wandering life of a religious mendicant, 
with the aim of imparting true knowledge and guidance for the spread of religious and spiritual consciousness in Narada tradition, to provide guidance through the medium of ethics to the administrative setup in the tradition of Aryabhata, to build up Pragya Sanstans in different places in Shankaracharya tradition, to promote all-around health with the help of proper dieting according to Pipalada tradition, and to convene Pragya Samelans from place to place for educating the masses according to Sut Shunuk tradition. Gurudev also indicated the outline of establishing Brahma Varjas Research Institute for conducting research on scientific lines according to the scientific traditions of Atharva Veda as was done by Kannada Rishi. I was explained in detail what I had to do at Haridwar and how difficulties coming in my way were to be resolved. I assimilated each and every word uttered by Gurudev. Last time, when I had visited the Himalayas, I was to act according to the directions given by Gurudev alone. This time, I was assigned the onerous responsibilities of undertaking additional, momentous tasks. This poor donkey was to be more alert and more diligent. Without elaborating, Gurudev simply gave a hint that after doing all this, I will have to pay a fourth visit to the Himalayas and shoulder still greater responsibilities and take steps to withdraw into the astral body. I was informed that the work at Haridwar would be more difficult than at Madhura. The onslaughts of devilish elements would have to be faced down more resolutely and there would be several ups and downs after explaining where and how I had to live and perform my daily routine I was told that I should regard it as a joint program of Gurudev and all the other rishis. I assured Gurudev that for me, he was the representative of the Supreme Lord and all the rishis and devdas, and all his instructions would be complied with till my last breath. Our talks ended. After bidding farewell, Gurudev disappeared. I was escorted up to Gomuk by his Virbhadra. It is not necessary to mention the places where I was required to stay for about a year, as they are inaccessible places in the Himalayas. While returning, I stayed at the place indicated by Gurudev in Haridwar. It was the Tapo Bhumi of Saptarishis, which was lying deserted and was for sale. It was marshy. Ganga used to flow through this land in the past. I liked it. The owner of the land was contacted. The deal was struck and reduced into writing. I had to take the decision all by myself. The counsel of the advisors was of no avail, as I failed to make them understand the mystical significance of the place. The purpose for which it was being acquired and the blueprint of the proposed construction. Even the supervisory work of construction had to be done by me. Thus came into being the Shantikunj Shaktipita at Haridwar. Establishment of Gayatri Tirtha in Shantikunj Haridwar I returned from the Himalayas in 1972 to Haridwar, where I had already got a small building named Shantikunj built earlier. It was sufficient for the stay of Mataji and Dev Kanyas, who were living with her. More land was purchased and construction work was started. The idea was to develop it into a Rishi ashram, in the beginning living accommodation for myself, my colleagues and guests along with the kitchen was built. This ashram symbolizes Devatma Himalaya and hence symbolic temples of Ganga, Uttrakhand and seven rishis, other important rishis, were built there. Within two years, the temple of Adya Shakti, Gayatri, wells and the meeting hall were also built and Shantikunj was turned into a tapas thali, center for spiritual pursuits. A small room for installing the idol of Gayatri Mata and the Akhand Deep had already been built earlier. 24 Purusa Charanas of 24 lakhs each were to be performed to awaken the dormant energy sanskars, of this land, which was lying barren since long. In the beginning, nine virgin girls performed Jap for four hours in the day and four hours in the night. Later, the number of these girls was increased to 27. They were all trained and taught by Mataji, and after a period of six years, they all attained the standards of graduation and post-graduation. All these girls were suitably married between the ages of 20 and 25 years. 
Earlier, all these girls, numbering more than a hundred, were trained in music and in delivering religious discourses, and were sent throughout the country in batches of five for spreading the message of the mission, especially in awakening women all over the country. The work of molding and preparing vibrant and brilliant workers was taken in hand at Haridwar, and for this, Pran Pratyavartan camps, Yugshilpi camps, Van Prasta camps of the duration of one month each were organized. The holy atmosphere of Shantikunj, situated on the banks of the holy Ganga, in the lap of the Himalayas, surcharged with spiritual vibrations, attracted and inspired hundreds of persons who participated in this series of small and big Gayatri Purusacharanas, which were started here for general category of sadhas. Side by side, the training of self-sacrificing Von Prestis, who had dedicated their entire life in the service of this mission, also continued. The number of such sadhaks continued steadily increasing. The services of such self-sacrificing, devout, full-time sadhaks who were in conscious process of spiritual awakening were needed to revive Rishi traditions by engaging them in the spread of this momentous missionary task. 250 quarters were built in Gayatri Nagar, a big hall to accommodate about a thousand persons to listen to spiritual discourses and a yagya shala with nine kunj were also built. Yagya is performed at Shanti kunj in the morning for two hours to promote piety. It was so planned that the permanent residents of the ashram and the visitors participating in Purusacharanas may jointly perform a Purusacharana of 24 lakh jap daily. A small press was also installed for urgent work. In the meantime, the construction of the grand building of Brahma Varcha's research institute was taken in hand. The completion of all of these works took about four years. In the meantime, other works which were necessary for the revival of Rishi traditions were also taken in hand according to feasibility. Bhagwan Buddha had organized Bihars at Nalanda and Taksila as great and world-renowned centers of higher learning and teaching, where inmates were trained and deputed for delivering spiritual discourses throughout the country and also in foreign countries. Bhagwan Adya Shankaracharya had established four dhams in the four corners of the country, and he tried to unite and coordinate different schools of philosophy and paths of spiritual sadhana, which were then prevalent in the country. Both of them had initiated organization of huge conferences and seminars of kumbha dimensions, so that important messages of the rishis could be conveyed far and wide through the participants. Both these activities were taken in hand. It was decided to build and set up temples and working centers in the form of Gayatri Shakti Pitas and Pragya Sanstans throughout the country to spread the activities and message of the Pragya mission in the surrounding area. Although it appeared to be a difficult task, inspired and devoted people took a pledge and within a short period of two years, 2,400 Shaktipita buildings were erected, which are being used as centers for spreading the light and message of Yukjatna from house to house. This work is so vast and marvelous that even the work done by Christian missionaries stands no comparison with it. Churches, temples, and other institutions are built by huge donations, but our temples have been built by small contributions made by devotees. A campaign for running mobile Pragya Pitas was also launched. These are run by one worker in a mobile push vehicle in his own city or town and also in the surrounding areas. Besides books, other articles are also kept in it. Within a period of two years, about 12,000 such mobile Pragya Pitas were brought in operation. About one lakh people are being contacted and inspired every day by these permanent and mobile Pragya Pitas. It was further arranged to celebrate four-day annual functions of these branches in which at least a thousand people could participate. A team of four musicians and one speaker was deputed in such celebrations from Haridwar 
to convey New Year's message to the concerned center. Jeeps were arranged for this purpose so that the luggage of the workers, musical instruments, loudspeakers, etc. could also be taken along with them. The driver of the Jeep is a trained mission worker, and every worker is now being trained in the skill of driving so that there might not be any difficulty in this respect. Most of the important literature had already been published while I was living in Madurai. After shifting to Haridwar, it was decided to write 18 volumes of Pragya Purana in Sanskrit, along with commentary and illustrations, and one folder of eight pages daily to acquaint the people with methods of working of all the rishis. Four volumes of Pragya Purana have already been published. 400 folders have also been written. Most of them have been published in Hindi and other important languages. In order to make arrangements for the spread of the message in all important languages and prepare trained workers in every region, a school of languages and religious instructions has been started in Shantikunj, and it has already started working satisfactorily. The volunteers of this mission undertake country-wide tours and inspire about 10 lakh devotees of the mission. The mission's network has been firmly established in Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Orissa, and Maharashtra. Attempts are being made to extend the field of operation and publicity. Within about four years' time, the remaining regions of the country, which could not be touched so far due to language problems. Indian migrants, numbering nearly three crores, are staying abroad in about 74 foreign countries. A successful scheme has been launched to spread the ideology of the mission amongst these migrants as well as foreigners. It will be possible in the near future to spread the light and message of the mission through capable workers in several foreign countries. There is hardly any country inhabited by Indian migrants where a center slash branch of this mission has not been set up. In order to vigorously extend Rishi traditions, about a thousand self-sacrificing workers are constantly engaged in this work. For this, a Gurukul, Aranyak, in the tradition of Rishi Jamandagni, works regularly at Chantikunj. In reviving Charak tradition, a garden of rare medicinal herbs has been developed in Chantikunj, and research is being conducted with the help of valuable scientific instruments. The theory of treatment by only one medicine at a time is being followed here, and at the same time has been proven very efficacious. Thousands of persons have been trained so far in light music through Yagshilpi Vidyalaya at Shantikunj, and such trained persons are running schools and preparing persons in Yukshangir in their respective areas. The earth is influenced by interplanetary atmosphere. Information about this is of great importance. It becomes necessary to rectify deviations in astronomical arithmetic after every 5,000 years. To revive the science of Aryabhata, an observatory, Vedshala, on the lines of ancient instruments has been built in Gayatri Nagar and planetary observations, including those of Neptune, Plato, Uranus, are made, and an almanac, unique of its kind, is published from here every year. A new project of mass moral education through audiovisual media has been taken in hand. Earlier, slide projectors were sent to all the branches of the mission. Now, the medium of video is being utilized. Inspiring films on the basis of music, poems, etc., and discourses of eminent persons are being prepared and projected through the medium of video sets. A grand scheme of preparing a film to explain the objects, nature, and benefits of the programs of this mission is being taken in hand and is going to materialize shortly. The greatest creation of this mission is the Brahma Varchas Research Institute, a laboratory consisting of several valuable scientific instruments and apparatus has been set up here to conduct research on synthesis of science and spirituality. It is being manned by workers who are graduates and postgraduates in medical science, Ayurved and etc., and other branches of modern sciences and who are also spiritually oriented. Research is being conducted specifically in the science of yajna. 
Its results have been found to be encouraging with regard to its healing impact on physical and mental diseases, on animals and vegetation, and in refining environment and atmosphere. The health of all of the participants attending various camps at Shantikunj is examined, and they are advised to do sadhana accordingly. This is the unique research laboratory, first of its kind in the whole world. People are given inspiration and training in different branches. Other, more important projects are going to be taken up in the future. Millions of people in Gayatri Parivar, while going for pilgrimage to Uttarkhand, begin their pilgrimage by paying a visit to Shantikunj and by applying its dust on their foreheads, considering it a Shakti Pitas. They visit Shantikunj and get Ana Prashan, Namkaran, Mundan, and Yagyopav. Ceremonies of their children performed here. Arrangements have also been made to perform Shraddha and Tarpan rituals of Pitras, their deceased ancestors. People come here in large numbers to celebrate their birthdays and marriage anniversaries. A large number of Parijans come to Shantikunj Haridwar and Tapabhumi Madra to get marriages of their sons and daughters solemnized here as per Vedic rites and without incurring avoidable expenses on dowry, receptions, pomp and show, and outmoded customs. While I was entrusted with the task of reviving the work of ancient rishis, I was in a dilemma, as taking up so stupendous a work in hand needed not only vast sums of money, but also committed workers of high morale and spiritual cal caliber. All other institutions have paid employees, but those who are working in Shantikunj and Brahmavarchas Research Institute are persons who have come after voluntarily resigning their highly lucrative technical posts. Some of them take meals in Shantikunj kitchen. Some pay its cost from the interest of their bank deposits, while some are maintaining themselves on their pension. Several persons swayed by emotions come to join, but only those who understand the fundamental objectives of the mission and the ideology of its founder are able to stick and stay here permanently. It is gratifying to note that more and more sincere and devoted persons are getting continuously linked with this mission. One will hardly find another instance where so many persons would be working for a single mission day and night as volunteers without taking a single paisa for their maintenance. Only Shantikunj is lucky in this respect, where highly qualified persons with undergraduate postgraduate and doctorate degrees in humanities, science, medical science, Ayurved, Sanskrit, etc., are working as volunteers. Hardly can one find such humility, service-mindedness, industriousness, and devotion elsewhere as is found in these dedicated, efficient, and intelligent workers. There has been no occasion to ask for donations from anyone for undertaking all these works. The months are given by Maldiyaji about collecting a handful of grain and ten paisa daily has worked this miracle. This work is bound to go on extending. A full-fledged high school and an intermediate college and a hospital are functioning at my birthplace, which I left long back. The work at Madura has increased almost four times after I left it. Slowly and steadily, other competent persons have started shouldering my responsibilities. I am confident that this work will go on increasing as time passes. It is the work of rishis which will go on spreading like Matsya Avatar in this era of incarnation of Pragya Avatar. I may or may not choose to remain in this physical frame for long, but my invisible astral self will go on accomplishing all the work which rishis have entrusted to me. The mantra, as you sow, so shall you reap, which I followed all my life. When after returning from the Himalayas to Haridwar, an outline of the structure of Shantikunj Ashram was prepared. Resources were needed for its establishment and expansion. It needed material resources, persons, and heroic efforts to struggle hard against the challenges of the critical times. I had to be simultaneously vigilant and active on two fronts. On the one hand, I had to battle against the evil forces which were bent upon undoing all that had been achieved so far in the fields of culture civilization and genuine human growth and consciousness. On the other hand, I had to engage in creative endeavors of epoch proportions to usher in a happy, bright, peace-filled future for humanity at large. I had nothing to do for my own sake. God provides food even to tiny creatures and insects. Everybody gets up hungry in the morning, but seldom does anyone sleep hungry at night. 
From the very beginning, I had no passion, desire, lust, and greed, and ego could not beguile me. Whatever I was doing was done for God's sake, according to Guru Dev's direction. He had entrusted these two tasks of struggle against the forces of darkness and of divine creation, both of which I was doing enthusiastically. There was an never any room for procrastination or evasion in my nature. By the grace of God, it was my habit from the very beginning to do whatever had to be done with full attention and enthusiasm. As regards the resources necessary for new creation, Gurudev had always indicated the formula of sowing and reaping. A small single grain of maize or padra, when it develops into a plant, yields more than 100 such grains. Draupati had torn a small portion of her sari and had given it to a saint so that he could use it as a langoti to cover his nudity. In course of time, it magnified to such an extent that Sri Krishna had to rush with a huge bundle of saris to help her in the moment of her dire need. Gurudev said, Whatever you want to get, start sowing its seed. I strictly followed this mantra, and the result was according to his assurance. Along with his physical form, a human being gets astral and causal bodies, intellect and aspirations from God. Money which one gets is either self-earned or inherited. I had not earned, but had inherited ample property from my ancestors. In persuasions of Gurudev's directions, I used all my money, resources, intellect, and aspirations for God's work. I performed a worship Vajrapasana in the night and used my time in labor strength throughout the day in the service of Virat Brahma. This was my sadhana, not only during waking hours, but even in my dreams. My mind and intellect always remained engrossed in the pursuit of ways and means for promoting the welfare of mankind. My aspirations and feelings always remained absorbed in the virat. I loved noble ideas and not objects or persons. Aspirations for uplifting the downtrodden always surged in my heart. I considered this Virat to be my god. Arjun, Yashoda, Kaushalya, Kakbusundi had a glimpse of this Virat, and they were all blessed. I dedicated everything which I had to the Virat Brahma, to humanity as a whole. There could be no better and fertile field to sow the seeds of goodness, nobility, service, selflessness, etc. In course of time, these yielded bumper crops, and my god owns were at full with the rich harvest. Resources and resource persons were thus made amply available for the tasks which were entrusted to me. From the point of view of physical build-up, I was weak from my very birth, but the life force within has always been mighty. In young age, I had taken only bread and barley and buttermilk without any vegetables, ghee, or milk for 24 years. The body was therefore bound to be lean and thin, but having resorted to the technique of sowing and reaping, it is so strong, even at the age of 78, that when a few days back a bull had run amok, assaulted me, it was ground, was pushed with the help of my shoulders and thrown flat on the ground, and it had to be beat with a hasty retreat. It is no longer a secret that about a year back, a hired killer, backed by promoters of immorality and extremist tendencies, repeatedly attempted to shoot me with a five-bore revolver. But the bullets got stuck in the bullet holes, and in an utter sense of panic and bewilderment, the revolver fell down from his hands. He then started madly stabbing me. There was profuse bleeding. None of the strokes, however, pierced a deep in the body and miraculously got deflected sideways. The doctor stitched the wounds, and in a few weeks, the wounds healed, and my body became normal as before. This should be regarded as a miraculous event. And as much as a loaded five-bore revolver in the hands of a hired professional killer refused to work, twelve stabs of a dagger used for cutting animals ended up leaving behind only superficial wounds. The culprit later got wounded by his own bomb and landed in jail. The person on whose instigation he had committed this heinous assault 
has been awarded the death sentence. The demoniac act of the evil forces thus failed to checkmate divine efforts. It was thus established that the savior is greater than the killer. These days, the technique of Sukshimi Karana, of transforming one into five, is in progress. This has resulted in further thinning of the body. Still, this body is in such a condition that it can remain alive as long as I wish to keep it. But I will not voluntarily do so because a stage comes when physical body becomes a hurdle and hindrance and ought to be shed, as far greater work can be accomplished through the astral body. The life force in this body has worked ten times more than its normal capacity. Shankaracharya and Vivekananda lived only for about 35 years, but accomplished what could not have been ordinarily accomplished in 350 years. In 78 years, I have done so much work in different fields that in the ordinary course of mere human effort, it could not have been done in less than 750 years. The entire time was spent in preparing a foundation for new creative work. Intelligence was sown in the field of God, and it manifested in the form of extraordinary brilliance. Literature of superb quality, written by me so far, is equivalent to the weight of my body. Articles have been written and piled up to be published and used till the year 2000 A.D. None has so far been able to concretize the aim of synthesizing spirituality with science, which is being done in Brahmavarcha's research institute. In the near future, the authenticity of spirituality will have to be tested on the touchstone of scientific approach. There is much hue and cry about preparing and implementing five-year plans by different countries, but the plan of spiritually transforming the whole of humanity and its implementation, which is being undertaken at the Shantikunj, can be termed as amazing. I have dedicated my feelings and aspirations for the uplift of the downtrodden. Shiva had done the same thing. He enjoyed the company of creatures of strange and freakish shapes and sizes. He even embraced snakes. I followed the same path. When the fellow who had assaulted me with a dagger was being chased by the people and the police, I called them back and allowed him to escape. And there had been several such occasions in my life when the adversaries who had left no stones unturned to harm me were rewarded in return by a smile. I have immensely loved people and in return have been loved by them 100 times more. They have been followed by my directions, with devotion and total dedication, in the face of great difficulties, and have even gladly suffered material losses for the sake of mission's work. Just on hearing a word from me, splendid buildings of Gayatri Shaktipitash were erected, costing crores of rupees. In addition, 12,000 Pragya Sanchtans were also started. When I was assaulted, many people rushed at Shantikunj to express their love and sympathy as if Shantikunj had been inundated by a sea of humanity. Each one of them expressed his keenness to take revenge, but we coaxed and pacified them and diverted our, their minds to creative direction. This was nothing but an expression of love, affection, and intense intimacy towards me by the people. I address my wife as Mataji. We have intimate and deep love for each other. She has lived with me like a shadow, and has participated with me in all activities of the mission. It will be true to say that we have one life, pran, although two bodies. I have been loved even by animals and birds who have lived with me like friends and family members. This has been witnessed by people with great amazement. Creatures who ordinarily shun human beings did not hesitate to sit on my shoulders and sleep by my side in my bed. There is nothing but a reflection of their love and affection for me. I needed money from time to time. Crores of rupee were spent in building Gayatri Tapobhumi, Shantikunj, Gayatri Nagar, and Brahmavarchas Institute. Without deviating from the pledge of not begging anything from human beings, all the needs were fulfilled. The number of full-time workers is more than a thousand. Satisfactory arrangements for their maintenance according to their lifestyle of a true Brahmana are being made. All expenses on account of press, publication, jeeps, and other transport are being met without difficulty. All this is the harvest of the seeds sown in the field of God, in the form of each and every paisa which I possessed. I am proud of this harvest. 
though personally I am penniless. Huge schemes are being materialized, which it, which it is even impossible to do, for a multimillionaire as well. All this could be possible only on account of the formula given by Gurudev. Do not accumulate, scatter, sow, and reap. Implementation of this formula of Gurudev in this the background of this flourishing garden of righteousness which is visible in the form of Gayatri Parivar. End of chapter 8. Jai Gurudev.